They've already had their breakfast. I just think they're getting a second helping. I've just come down to close the gates because they've already had their breakfast. Look, isn't that just so beautiful? The beach on top of the hill. Look at how long the willow is holding its leaves. They'll suddenly all go yellow and suddenly one day I'll look out and all the leaves will have fallen off the willows. Lots of trees are now naked. The beach are still, some of the beach are still clinging onto their leaves. But I love the sheep. Their black color or chocolate dark brown with the beech trees color, autumn color. Hey kitty. Yeah, you following me all around. So, can you guys leave? Come on. You too. This is Kestrel and her sidekick. I can never remember her sidekick's name. I'm always I'm a numpty sometimes with names. I give them names and then I forget what their names are. So, come on, Kestrel. Hey, hey! There we go. <laughs> Java. <laughs> okay, Java, leave it. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, there's a photograph for you. There we go. Yes, kitty. You beautiful kitty. Yeah. Yeah, you can walk along here much easier than in the shed. Oops, I wasn't meaning to push you off. That was not my intention. And you, bold one. What? Hey, you're gonna jump down now. I have to tie this up. Castrol. She'll follow me up along this fence line. She's looking for her treat. And I'm such a softie, I give her a treat. And she stands up on the new gate and she says, can I have a little handful of food? I'll go get some. Yes. She's so sweet. Oh, look at her. Kestrel. There we go. Oh, there's a couple more nuts. Yes. You're so good. You're such a good girl. No more. That's done. Yes. Yum, yum. Finger licking good. <laughs> so this is our yard. It's where all the vehicles come and go. Very solid, gravelly. But you know it's wet. And you know... Can you move? Yeah, you're in the way. Hello, you. This is a worm casting. So my soil is so rich, even under our hard surface of cobble, gravel, soil mixture, worms are coming up through it. That means I've got really good biology here on the farm. Here's another one right there. So that's one, two, <laughs> and a cat's foot. <laughs> oh, they're all getting all over excited now because I'm looking at the ground. Anyway, that is <laughs> as long as the dogs don't flatten it. That's a really good um, example of the care I take with for my soil even if it's on the hard surface, just outside the cottage, I have worm castings all over the place, as well as dogs and a cat. <laughs> but this is what 
biodiversity is all about and allowing space for drainage to occur and for worms and biological life. Isn't that right? Biological life that is visible to the naked eye. And now they've all stompled all over it. <laughs> but the evidence is there. Anyway, that's, I've got to go and sort, write down lamb tags now before I load them up tomorrow morning. So I'm gonna write the tags down before they're loaded just to make life easier for myself or even the day before they're loaded. And she's on to her next apple. She loves her apples. Don't you? <laughs> Good girl. sheep. Clever boy. Get above the sheep. Okay, ear tags checked. I've got to untie this gate here because I've been keeping them in here. Da, 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 da. There we go. Baling twine. Essential for farming. So, come on babies. Go on. Come on. Whoop, whoop. Oh, look, the gate blew closed and you got in the way. There we go. Come on, babies. Come on. Go back inside. We have to go. Go on. Come on. Why aren't you helping, Time? There we go. Java, 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 Java. Let him be. Good boy. Atta boy. Okay. So tags all recorded. Ah, no. Java. Enough. And I managed to dag the last lamb that needed dagging. Uh, my batteries ran out yesterday when I was dagging. And on the last lamb. That lamb doesn't need dagging because it doesn't have any shit on its bottom. So... Uh, it's clean, considered clean. So the, they're all dagged and all their numbers are recorded. Java, leave them be, good boy. Hey Mustard, how are you kitty? Yeah. Okay, that job is done. While I was doing it, it was raining. So it's a mucky, mucky day. The horses are up in the field though. Mustard, you're so beautiful with the black lambs in the background. You're such a beautiful orange kitty, aren't you? Yeah, you beautiful kitty. Yeah, I know. You're above all the boys. They're curious about you. Yes, kitty. Okay, I'm gonna go check on the two remaining rams in the orchard. I did my selection yesterday um, to do with confirmation of the lambs and which ram lambs I wanted want lambs I wanted to keep, and I ended up only wanting to keep one because the other ones had things like slightly crooked knees or they had other kind of issues. And they're all, all the ones that I got rid of are ones from a ram that I didn't really like and wasn't sure, but I had to buy it because I needed a ram that wasn't related to all my sheep. So he produced some well-marked lambs, but they had, that's difficult. Are you gonna go around that stake? Hmm? Yeah, you gonna go around? No? That's complicated. It's not easy to do. You have to be much more rubbery and bendy than that. So anyway, I, uh, <sighs> hey, excuse me, Java. No, no. 
so I eliminated the, I checked after I'd selected my ram, lamb that I was keeping. Hey, Java, no. Leave them alone, both the cat and the sheep. You're bold. You're very bold. So what was interesting was that the ram lamb that I'm keeping is from the ram, my really good homebred ram. And I made sure I didn't think about the breeding when I was selecting for confirmation. So it kind of confirmed uh, what I was thinking about what the best ram lamb was to keep. And it's always the ram lambs you keep are always the ones that are best to bring the breed confirmation all kinds of things, health issues all forward uh, within the breed. So that's what I was uh, doing, eliminating those lesser ram lambs so I keep the best one. And I ended up only keeping one. So here come the boys. This is the ram lamb I'm keeping. You can see his front legs coming towards us. He's got very straight his knees, no real bends in them. There he is, so you can see the front legs are quite straight. He is Little Bit and Hickory's son. He's got a nice length to his back. Isn't that right? How are you? This is Larch, because I've already named him. When he was born, I thought he was really nice. His back legs, Right there, those are his pasterns. And they're really nice and high. He's got, whoops. He's got a square back, meaning that he's not cow hocked. His, those are his hocks, the kind of middle knee, if you will, at the back. And he tracks up quite well, meaning that his back leg goes to where his front leg was. So he's got a lot of nice things. He's well marked. He's got the two white bobby socks, tip to a tail, and a nice healthy blaze. So he's actually a really nice looking ram lamb. Okay, his knee looks bent, but that's just the way he's standing. So you have to constantly be moving him around to assess his conformation. He tracks up into, and he stands quite square, which is really good. Standing square is means he's got four good legs. So Larch is the one I'm keeping. He's Little Bits, Lamb, and Hickory is his sire. And I actually really liked him as soon as he was born. So it kind of confirms what I thought around the time he was born, that he's a really nice ram lamb. So hopefully uh, he'll mature into a really good ram next year and I'll sell him as a good pedigree Zwartbus ram. They're a little bit nervous because there's only the two of them now. And uh, all the other four are not here. So, he's a very nice looking ram lamb. He's standing kind of funny, but that's just, I'm not trying to make him stand up correctly. Oh, and vitally important, he has good, two good testicles as well. So, anyway, there we go. mature into himself hopefully over the year.
Very handsome boy.